You've been thinking about becoming a real estate agent. You're trying to weigh the pros and the cons. Let me give you the top five cons that you do not know about. So that way, when you make your decision, you can properly weigh them. Let's get into it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Connor Green. I'm a realtor here in Tampa Bay. And as a realtor, there are a lot of things that you don't realize, you don't know coming into the business that kind of shock you a little bit, um, some more than others, some you probably should know, some it's reasonable for you not to know. Uh, and it's not all pros, you know? And so it's good to know the negatives too before you make that jump. Number one is gonna be no PTO. And that one might sound a little bit more obvious. Of course, you're not gonna have paid time off, but if you're coming from a position where you do have it to all of a sudden not have it, it's something you might not consider. And there's a big difference between when you take you know, your few weeks of vacation during the year and still getting paid, or every time you take a day off, whether you know it's a sick day, or you're helping your parents out with something, or you're helping a friend move, or you're going on vacation, or you're doing anything, you're going to a wedding, you're not getting paid. And so that is one big difference when you're a realtor where a lot of people might not fully think about all the times in which you would get paid in a normal job, but in real estate, you don't. So that one's good to know. Number two, no benefits, and that does include insurance. So if you're someone who, you know, obviously you get all your insurance from your employer, you know, all of your benefits, 401k, all of a sudden you don't have that. And so while people might think real estate's this field where, oh my gosh, I can make so much money and look at how much money they make, uh, you don't get those benefits and you also don't get the benefit of your employer paying a good part of your taxes. You're gonna have to pay your own self-employment tax um, and be paying your own taxes. So every dollar you bring in is just not the same. If you're an employee, every dollar you bring in is not the same as, as a self-employed person bringing in $1 because you just have more costs you know, of running the business, of taxes, of everything when you're self-employed. I'm not saying there's not benefits, that's not the point of this video, uh, but you don't get a lot of the benefits that come with being an employee in a company, so make sure you're aware of those too. Number three, you're not gonna get paid for three to four months. I mean, imagine if you were working for a company and you worked for them for three months, four months, and it wasn't until at the end of four months that they finally paid you something. And that is very likely for real estate when you start off because it's a fairly long sales cycle. You know, it might take you a month to get a client. It might take you another month, you know, if you're lucky for that client to get under contract. And then it could take you 30 to 60 days for that property to actually close. That then puts you at three to four months. And that's if after one month, you already have a client. After 30 days, you already have that client or contract. And then after 30 to 60 days, that property is already closed. And there could be issues with the inspection or whatever, where it no longer is a good fit for the client. So maybe they had to find something else. So that's why I say it is very realistic for it to take three to four months before you're going to get paid. And you need to be ready for that. You need to be ready for that financially. You need to have money saved up. And you also need to be ready for that mentally so that you're just not completely like after month three and four, you're just like, screw this. I'm not making any money. You know, clearly I'm not any good at this because I went through that process too uh, and I did almost quit. So make sure you're aware of that and make sure you don't. <laughs> Number four, no consistency in pay. So most likely, you know, when you spend money, you probably go out to dinner a few times a month or have some stuff that you spend on. Maybe it's, you know, shopping or whatever it is. You're gonna have some personal expenses and you kind of account for your personal expenses within the pay that you're getting from your employer. You say, okay, well, I'm making 2,000 or 3,000 a month and then, you know, I've got this amount that I have to put towards my car and then this amount towards groceries and this amount towards, you know, fun with friends. And it's kind of nice to have that consistent amount you're bringing in every month and then know that you have budgets for each of the things and you're always gonna have enough money to pay for those. Now in real estate, there's no consistency. So you could have three deals one month, zero the next, zero the next, five the next. You know, you could sell a million dollar property, you could sell a $5 million property, and then all of a sudden, you know, you can't sell a property, you know, it seems like for more than 200,000. Um, so, so you need to be ready for that inconsistency of pay. And again, that's something that you need to be ready for both financially as well as mentally. And the expectation of it and just knowing that it's coming is gonna help you tremendously. Number five is going to be working for free. And what I mean by that is that as a real estate agent, you do not get paid on an hourly basis. And for the most part, you don't even necessarily get paid per deal because if the deal doesn't go through or the client doesn't take the action you want them to take, then you don't get paid. 
So you could go and show properties for a full day to a client, and then maybe you show another full day to that same client. I mean, you could have spent 100 hours with a client. If they don't end up buying, you will not make any money. Now, some agents might do like a transaction fee or a, you know stuff like that where they try to cover some of their costs. I don't personally do that. I don't think it's very widespread in the industry that it's done. Uh, you definitely can, but a lot of buyers might be a little bit weary if you try to do that. So you have to be comfortable with the fact that you might not get paid for the time that you put in. And it's something that's it's very frustrating um, because you're spending a lot of time, but also spending a lot of money and it could be spent elsewhere. So that is another thing you have to be ready for and wary of. And it's something that will make you always kind of evaluate and pre-qualify your clients just to make sure they're 100% serious and you're putting your time in the right place. So there you go guys, those are my five top negatives and reasons that you should not become a real estate agent if you're not okay with any of those five. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop a comment below. I'm happy to give you a unfiltered and honest response as far as my opinion. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. And if you like real estate, if you wanna learn more about it, whether it's you know, just staying up to date with the market in general or specific real estate topics, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I make more videos just like this, super easy to understand and nice and straightforward. But that's it for me today, guys. So until next time, this is Connor Green. Have a blessed day.